In Good Shape, your health magazine on DW, featuring an interview with a different expert every week. And I'm with Dr. Oliver Peters. He's head of the Memory Clinic here at the Charité in Berlin, and he's doing research in the field of dementia. Thanks for inviting me into your clinic. Hi. Dr. Peters, what do you think about vegetables, fruit and fish to prevent dementia? Healthy nutrition might help uh, to prevent dementia. You will not um, um, prevent it uh, anyway, but uh, it might help somehow, yes. So you, you reduce the risk for getting it? Exactly. You, you might decrease the risk to suffer from dementia. As a GP, I always tell my patient to stick to a Mediterranean diet to prevent diabetes or heart disease. Um, has diabetes something in common with dementia that um, the, the nutritional advice is basically the same? There are perils uh, in, in both diseases uh, in that way that um, uh, healthy nutrition might help to uh, keep your vessels clean to improve the, um, um, the, the brain with, with blood and, uh, and oxygen. But um, yeah, there's, there's, there's a peril in, in, in this. And are there other risk factors in the development of dementia? Yeah, there are uh, other kinds of dementia. Uh, they uh, develop uh, by chronic neurodegeneration. Um, the most common disease is uh, Alzheimer's dementia. This is a complete different thing. We got a lot of patients who um, have dementia and are depressed as well. Is depression and dementia in any way related? Yeah, there is a relation in, in both ways. Uh, on one hand, depression uh, might increase uh, the risk to develop dementia. And on the other hand, uh, it is known that in many cases, uh, depression might be the earliest sign of dementia. So there is a close relationship between both diseases. We got a lot of questions over the internet. One of them is from Sandro Palermo from Italy. He says that vitamin D and antioxidants are known that they can protect the brain. Is there any truth to that? Um, in that way that if you suffer from malnutrition, then you uh, should take vitamins uh, to add those who are not uh, enough uh, in your body. But if you, um, you uh, have, have a normal uh, nutrition, then you don't need these uh, additional vitamins. So there's no additional use if you just top up your vitamins above the normal level. Exactly. Samara from Tunisia wants to know, is sugar dangerous to your brain? The brain is metabolizing high amount of uh, sugar uh, that we uh, that we use, and uh, but there is no hint that uh, too much sugar might um, be deleterious to the brain. It's it's one thing to try to protect your brain from damages and to to suffer from dementia later on in life, but what if there are early signs of dementia? Can you change this with the right nutrition? No, there's there's uh, there's no hint that you can do that. If if this is uh, really the beginning of a of a dementia of, of Alzheimer type, you may not uh, be able to 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 change that by just uh, changing your lifestyle. So it's more. Like like having the right life, lifestyle during life to decrease the risk. Exactly, of that way okay, will so. work. Dr. Peters, um, Alzheimer's disease is the most common form of dementia. Can you protect yourself from Alzheimer's disease with a healthy lifestyle as well? You may do something that is helpful also in uh, regard to uh, Alzheimer's disease. Uh, this is because Alzheimer's, there is almost no pure Alzheimer's disease. There is always um, also uh, a vessel disease um, and this is the part of uh, dementia that you can, uh, where you can do something. Um, the, the core of Alzheimer's disease is neurodegeneration and this is uh, what you, to our best knowledge, cannot influence by your lifestyle. Alzheimer's is very hard to treat, but there are new medications currently used, uh, the so-called antibodies as a therapy. And how are they working? There are symptomatic treatments uh, already available and uh, this is uh, uh, important to mention at the, this point, but we cannot cure the disease and uh, this is the difference. We can just improve the symptoms so far. Um, our ultimate goal is to, to cure the disease and uh, what we think or what we can imagine is that 
uh, by giving antibodies uh, every month um, we can um, improve the immune system and by this remove the so-called plaques that are um, most likely um, the, the cause for the disease and uh, by this we might stop the progression of the disease. And when do we have to start therapy? When the first symptoms appear? Full-blown dementia is uh, too late for this approach. Uh, we have, to, we, we have to, to, to give the antibodies as early as possible. Um, nowadays we, we are doing this uh, in very early dementia stages, but we can also imagine that this has to be done um, when only the earliest signs can be detected uh, either in the cerebrospinal fluid or by imaging methods. And how do you detect the early signs? So you just take some fluid out of the body and exactly take a look you at can that? you can uh, examine the um, the cerebrospinal fluid uh, or you can use uh, new imaging techniques. Uh, amyloid imaging is this called and this is a nuclear medicine technique where you visualize the plaques uh, that are that cause the disease. But, but what kind of patients would you, would you say that they have to come to you into your clinic and get themselves checked for the risk of uh, Alzheimer? Normally uh, the rule is uh, that uh, everybody who suffers from memory problems for at least six months and a caregiver uh, also uh, observes these uh, problems, then you should go to a memory clinic and examine what's uh, behind this. Um, to do prevention, you might uh, do this um, in um, clinical um, programs where you go to specialized memory clinics and examine the cerebrospinal fluid uh, without having any symptoms, just if you think that you uh, have the risk to develop dementia. This is what we are already doing today. There are research teams all over the world working for the proper treatment or prevention of Alzheimer. So how long will it take until the problem is solved? This is an extremely uh, difficult question and nobody knows in the end. But we could imagine that uh, in probably two or up five years we will see the first new treatments uh, that may delay the disease onset and the disease progression.